Brakes, pads, and rotors are some of the most important upgrades you can make to your bike. In this video, I'm going to show you the cheapest and easiest upgrade you can make to your brakes, how anyone can easily transform the performance of their bike and climb higher up that Strava leaderboard, and I'm going to give you real ride data to show you where and how this is going to revolutionize your ride. I've been testing bikes, setups, and components for over 20 years. 10 years ago, I took this to the next level where I started my PhD in mountain biking. We tested things like tire, suspension, and power meters, hence the name MTB PhD. Of course, the main objective is to understand downhill physiology and braking, but it was all super relevant because I wake up every day to help mountain bikers get faster. Since then, I've only gone further down this rabbit hole, and today we make some of the most innovative MTB tech to help yeah. riders all around the world. In today's video, we're talking all about thicker MTB rotors. Make sure you stick around to the end where I pit normal thickness rotors to these big fatties and uncover real ride data to show the differences you can expect in your own ride. Pretty crazy because when I think back to my very first bike with disc brakes, it had tiny rotors, tiny calipers, and on every long descent, I lost pressure completely. But really, I don't think bikes were designed to go fast downhill anyway. Everyone just wanted the lightest weight stuff because they thought it made them faster. One of my most popular YouTube videos is on why you need bigger rotors. It's all about the science of what a bigger rotor on your mountain bike will do for you. Obviously, it resonated with a lot of riders. I'm a believer. Are you? Beyond just going bigger, some companies have started making thicker rotors. We're seeing these in the World Cup, Enduro World Series, and of course out here on my local trails too. This all got me wondering why anyone would want thicker rotors. I mean, what are the real benefits of thicker rotors? And will brands continue to push the envelope and go thicker and thicker as bikes get faster and faster? So bigger rotors like this solve a lot of problems for a lot of mountain bikers. You don't need to go this big. This one's 246 mil. But just remember what brakes do. Brakes convert your kinetic energy and that gets converted to heat in your pads and rotors. The faster you go and the harder you brake, the more heat you're going to generate. We already know that beginners brake more than pros and that this dragging of the brake, it makes them heat up or at least they don't have as much opportunity to cool down. At the same time, pros go super fast and brake super hard. The power of these brake events is well above a thousand watts. Now this is a ton of heat heat into your rotors. This heat spreads through the rotors, but if there's too much heat at one time, this could eventually affect your brake caliper and ultimately your brake fluid. At this point, your brakes may start to fade or you could lose pressure altogether. Bigger diameter rotors like a 203 or a 220 solve this by having a larger area for the heat to go into. This gives more opportunity for either storage or dissipation of the heat into the environment. If you compare that to smaller rotors, well, there's less mass and there's less ability to store this heat. So I know what you're wondering. It sounds like bigger rotors are the answer. So why would I want to go with thicker rotors? I came up with three reasons why thicker rotors are the answer for you, but still there's one reason why I love larger diameter rotors. All right, before we get to that, I have a bunch of rotors here that I want to show you the weights of. They're a pretty big range from 160 mil all the way up to 246 mil. So let's check those out. So one issue with going bigger on rotors is that you have less clearance between the ground and your rotor. I've never had an issue with that, but judging from the comments, this has stopped a lot of people from going to bigger rotors. The benefit of these thick rotors is they also have tons of mass, which means more opportunity to store heat. This means you may be able to get the heat storing capacity without affecting your ground clearance. Another benefit of going thicker is that the rotors are more resistant to warping or bending. This is something that I haven't experienced personally, but still this is a nice peace of mind to have a rotor that isn't going to leave you stranded in the middle of the bush. Third reason thicker rotors might be the answer for you is that you can make this upgrade quite cheaply. You don't need additional bolts or spacers, so all you need to do is a clean swap for the same size rotor you're already running, and instantly you have better heat storage capacity. Of course, without going one size up, you won't be able to use brake ice on your bike, but we won't hold that against you. Still though, one reason why I like larger diameter rotors is that they give you more leverage, a greater mechanical advantage over your brakes. What this does compared to smaller diameter rotors is that it reduces the force needed at your fingers to get the same braking power. In turn, this saves your arms, especially if you suffer from arm pump, I still think going bigger diameter is better for you, no matter what you're thinking when it comes to heat storage capacity. I had a quick cruise on my fourth favorite website of all time, AliExpress, and I found these $20 2.3 mil thick rotors. Seriously, only $20 per set. That's crazy. Like, super crazy. So I ordered these up, waited six or more weeks for delivery, and I got ready to do some science. 
I know heaps of you nerds have been hanging out for this because you want to learn the real science of whether thicker rotors are better for you or not. So let's mount up some brake ace, swap around some rotors, create a mini science protocol, and hit the trails. For this test, I used my old faithful Giant Trans 29er. This bike has been through a lot, and technically it's not even mine anymore. It's on borrow to my fiance. Of course, I could have used my own bike, but that one's set up with the new Radic Kaha brakes and 203 mil rotors, and I didn't really want to disturb a something that worked so well, so I decided to set up her bike for this test. I didn't think she'd mind because the whole point is to help you lot out. It's basically set up as a down country bike, which is perfect for my home trails. The brakes on this bike are the tried and true Magura MT5. I've never met anyone who doesn't like them. For comparison in this test, I kept all tire pressures and suspension settings the same and rode the same trail on the same day to control for bike setup and conditions. I've ridden this trail over 50 times on Strava, so I don't believe that there was any learning effect that is going to affect the order in which I use these different brake setups. For my first two runs, I used the bike as it was set up already, 180 mil rotors. I did two full runs with this setup, swapped them to the thicker rotors, and did two more runs to finish it off. Interestingly, I did a quick weight comparison looking at the weight of these brakes, and these Zitto 2.3 mil thick 180 mil diameter rotors are heavier than a SRAM centerline 200 mil rotor. There isn't a huge difference in the heat storing capacity given the mass, but no matter what size rotor you choose, it's a really small weight penalty if what you want is to ride faster downhills. All right, let's get into the test. A few moments later. All right, yo, what's up? I'm back from testing and actually my mind is pretty blown right now. My final run with these rotors ended up being the fastest. So let's dig into that data and I'll show you what I found. All right, so a minute 41, which I didn't think was actually too bad for me on this track. So that's totally sweet. My flow score is a 37 modulation there at about 80%. It looks like I have a lot of long brake events. Health, not too bad. Effectiveness, really good. 17 total brake events for a total of 46.8 seconds. Now, this one really blew my mind where I was closer to 50-50 braking. I've been aiming to get closer to 50-50 for a really long time. My other runs before this one weren't 50-50, and this probably shows why I kind of got faster. I was braking with more confidence as I went through this. So the front brake actually ended up getting hotter. I have two brake checks. I can probably find out oh, there they are. There are my brake checks there. Actually, that that's like a, that is a hefty brake check. Here's my biggest key opportunity: flow score of 13. So that's like that's honestly a huge proportion of all of my braking. Total of 12 seconds and only two brake events. So there they are. You can see like I don't actually get off the brakes very much. So if I wanted to go back and improve this section, I should be looking for places where I can brake with more purpose so I can spend more time off the brakes, letting the suspension do its work and using my body to set up for the next turn. Overall, in my key opportunity, I am really pleased to see that I was braking harder with the front brake. So 54% on the front, 46 on the rear in this whole key opportunity. The brakes themselves, they felt like the bike always has because I've had those rotors on for a really long time. Not Nothing special, I would say. And I got the name of that rotor covered up in the title of the ride because I don't want to hurt the feelings of the brand that makes them. All right, so here's my first run with the 2.3 rotors. Now, don't forget, I went out and I bedded the pads in properly and made sure everything was running mint before I went in to do the run. I did two runs on it, but actually my first run ended up being faster and way better. And man, I'm just going to cut to the chase. I went way faster and braked way better with these 2.3 mil rotors. Now, I I don't know what's happening here. Maybe it's because those original rotors were getting a little bit old. That's why I don't want to say what brand they are. But these, as soon as I put them in, they just felt crisp. They just felt grabby. And they just really felt like quality. Now, don't forget, these are only, I only did two runs on them, but they felt awesome. And I'm going to be happy to keep riding them. Man, right off the bat, I think the other one, the other run was a minute 42. This one was a minute 46 and Strava agrees. So if I, we dig into a little bit more, like we can see how I was doing better at modulating. I was bang, maybe breaking more consistently. My effectiveness wasn't as good. Maybe not such a bad thing. Health was definitely down probably because my break events ended up being longer. Let's see. I actually ended up cutting down heaps of break time. I think the other one was 46.8 seconds or something like that. Like, like, where did I find six seconds to cut out my braking? Now, this this is actually really interesting because I was further away from 50-50, but I ended up going faster. So 38-62 and my rear brake ended up getting hotter. This is fantastic for me. Zero brake checks. Always trying to get away from doing bloody brake checks, braking with more purpose. And just to give you a visual, I will show you all of my brake events. What I'm going to do also, I want to zoom in and show you how I was braking through these turns. 
that is actually looking quite good. A bit of dragging through it, back on the brakes after it, not too bad. Like, honestly, I am pretty pleased with myself how I did that. Bit of work to do there. Cool, so just to sum up the test, I definitely braked a lot better with a brand new 2.3 mil thick AliExpress rotors. They were awesome, I'm definitely gonna keep them on the bike. And since then, I have ordered a few more to try on my Radic Kaha brakes. There's a link down in the description. They're pretty sweet, give them a try. You don't really have much to lose. Pointing out that I haven't done any long-term testing. I literally only did this test, so I don't know if the, the rotors could just fall apart tomorrow. I really have no idea. If they do, I'll leave information about that down in the comments. In a way though, in this test, maybe what was happening is I was comparing new rotors to used rotors. I have always said that you probably get only two pairs of pads to one set of rotors and that you should probably replace them. Brakes look good, oh my God. I like his comment about the brakes. Right. Everyone should get new rotors all the time. All the time. All the time. Rotors make such a big difference. I wasn't really keeping track with these old rotors, but they didn't feel that terrible. Also, I think this kind of leaves some room for some other testing because what I probably need to do is compare 2.3 mil thick brand new rotors to maybe, let's say, 2.0 mil thick or even 3 mil thick rotors. There's plenty of testing we can do. What I'm hoping is that actually the community gets behind a little bit of this testing because there's basically endless tests we can do. No one's ever done testing on brakes using real data. We're kind of just starting that with Brake Ace. So if you like this video, check out this one right here. There's also a link in the description to the bigger rotors video. And if you enjoyed the content in this channel, don't forget, I also do fitness stuff too. So I already know my next video is gonna be testing the world's cheapest brakes. They've already arrived. They don't look too bad. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare the performance of the world's cheapest brakes, or probably the brakes that I used in this last test. I'm kind of hoping the cheap brakes are terrible, but you know, that's what I thought about these rotors too. So hang out for that one and we'll see what we find.